Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to our program. This is Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church, and I'm glad to have you here with us. We are here still at Grace Baptist Church, our uh, transition location, if you will, as we get prepared to move to our own building in just a few weeks. Had a little bit of a temporary delay, but we're planning on starting up there in just a few weeks from now. So in the meantime, we are still here at Grace Baptist Church in Greece. This is 1230 Long Pond Road right around the corner from Ridge Road or in, in uh, Grease Ridge Mall. We'd be so happy to have you in any of our services coming up, but I certainly hope you had a good Easter. Easter service just concluded last weekend. What a great time we had in the house of the Lord. Thankful for all those who were able to come here, and hopefully you were somewhere as well celebrating the Lord. Perhaps it was a new fresh start for you. Perhaps you reinitiated your relationship with God, and you're inspired now to do something great with your life and to let God have a part of that. I want to encourage you to make sure that you're part of a church right now to help build on that. Don't let that one moment of excitement kind of turn itself away. But it's something you need to build on. You need to be taught. You need to be together in fellowship with a group of believers. You need something to inspire you because everything out here right now is taking you the opposite direction. Trust me, and you know that's true as well. You're invited to join us. We're going to be here at Grace Baptist Church now for a few more weeks. Come and join us for our services. They take place on Wednesdays, beginning with prayer at 6.30, followed by our midweek service at 7 p.m. That's on Wednesday nights over in the classroom. And then we have our Sunday morning services here, beginning with Sunday school at 10 a.m. over in the classroom. Several different age groups. An age group for you and anybody in your family. Come join us at 10 o'clock in the morning for that, followed by our morning worship service here on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. Well, we're still getting ready, still growing, still connecting, still putting things together for this move, and I'll be happy to tell you about that more in just a couple of weeks. Things are almost together, almost finalized, but a little more to happen there to get us ready. In the meantime, join us here. Also, don't forget you can connect up with us through our Facebook page. That's Destiny Preparation Church on Facebook. You can connect up, learn more about us, things that are going on, things that are happening, the fellowships that we have, even the fun, along with the spiritual basis of what's going on here. You can also check out this program and any others, both on television or the Facebook page. You can connect up uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, we launch this program on Facebook every week, but we have the, the history of our programs on the YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube channel and you can connect up there with all the previous programs as well. The television times are listed for you right now, both here in Rochester along with in the suburbs. Two different sets of times. Watch us, channel 15 in, in Rochester and cable 98.5 in the suburbs. Let me take you now to the sermon. I'm going to take you now to a subject now that I started before Easter with just the beginning of this. We we're talking about your assignment, the fact that we all have a mission from God. There's something that God wants us to do. I want to continue that series right now with you with this sermon, which is going to be two part this week and next. It's called Get Focused. One of the things that we need to do once we hear from God, once we know that God has something for us to do, once we have an understanding of what's, what, where we're supposed to be going, you got to get focused. Because it's one thing to have an idea of what you should do. It's a whole other thing to do it. I pray this is going to bless you. Don't forget this week and next week on this sermon. Tell somebody about it. If you need a copy of it, contact us. We can get it to you on CD. God bless you. I hope that we're here from you and see you here in service real soon. Talking about the mission and understanding the mission, that God has a mission for us. Amen. And we need to align ourselves with what our mission is. Last week, we talked about your assignment, getting your assignment. You have to get your assignment. How many have been praying this past week, Lord, show me my assignment? Amen. Hopefully, you've been hearing some things. Perhaps it's not done yet. You need to keep brooding on that. Amen. Just like we said last week, don't give up until you hear from God. On Wednesday, we talked about, amen, understanding the voice of God. How do you hear from God? Don't give up until you know it's God. Because when it's God, he knows how to put it to you in a way that confirms that there's no doubt. He's not going to talk to you the same way he talks to you, but he'll talk to you in the way you need to hear. And when all is said and done, you will know that that was God. Don't give up in seeking his face until you know your assignment. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about getting focused. Amen. Look at somebody real quick and tell them, get focused, get focused. Amen. Once we have our assignment, once we know what we're supposed to be doing, 
Once we have heard from God and understand what we need, we need to do, then we need to get focused on the task at hand. Amen? We have to turn our heart, turn our mind, get our minds on what's happening, and get focused on getting it done. A lot of times we kind of know what we need to do, amen, but we have so many other things going on that we really never quite get it done. It takes focus to get things done. It takes time and attention. It takes purpose to get something done. It's nice to have a lot of ideas. It's a whole other thing to actually achieve something. There are a lot of people, most of us, probably all of us, at some time or another have had some great idea. Amen? Brilliant idea. Masterful idea that's come to us. Amen? But seldom do people actually achieve whatever it is that they have in mind to do. Sometimes somebody else ends up taking and doing your great idea. I thought of that five years ago. That little device they got on there to take the, you know, the skin off the potato or, you know, figure out how to get this out of the core out of the apple or whatever it is, this exercise device. I, ha I knew that, amen, a long time ago. Lots of people have great ideas. There are times in our lives when we get brainstorms, epiphanies, if you will, eurekas, visions, revelations. We get a word. We have an idea of something that we need to do, amen, and, and ultimately in that, you know, it's the same as we described. There are times you get your assignment. I know what I'm supposed to do. I get it. I have an idea of where I'm supposed to be going. Oftentimes in the midst of that, even, you know, some of the times we get those ideas and they're gone before we even get a chance to do anything with them. They come in a moment, they're gone in a moment. Brainstorm, great idea, gone. Because we take no action on it. We think about it, we don't write it down, we don't take any action, we don't get anything started. So that great idea just kind of falls by the wayside. It's kind of like, amen, the, the story that the Bible gives us, amen, in the book of Mark and Matthew, where it talk, Jesus talks about the sower casting seed. There are some seeds, some ideas, some words that come to us and we receive them, but before we can do anything with them, the Bible says the birds come and eat them up. Before you even get started with it, your idea has gone. Amen? So once you get an idea, once you get your assignment, once you get your vision, you need to understand that you need to do something with it. Otherwise, it will fall by the wayside. So for those who are praying, for those who are receiving from God, those who are hearing from God, just having hearing from, hear, hearing from him is not the end of the story. You can hear a great word in your, for your life and still nothing change. I'm going to pause there for a moment. You can get a great concept in your life of what you need to do and where you need to go and still nothing change. Because that idea can fall by the wayside and be eaten up and chewed up and spit out, amen, before you even know what happened to it. Amen? Many times we go this step further. We're getting started. We get an idea. We start running with it. And oftentimes we're running on emotion. We're, we're, we're excited about it. We, we feel it in the moment. And so we've got energy. We've got motivation. We're running. I'm going to do this. This is great. I'm going to go. Here I go. Let me get this started. Let me check this. Call that. Get this thing going. But the thing about emotion and driving on emotion is that when emotion begins to fade, then our, 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 our prior, other priorities start rising up. When, when, we, when our excitement begins to, to, to dwindle, when other things start happening, when the obstacles start showing up, oh, it's not quite as simple as I thought. You know, it's not, not quite as easy. You know, a lot of people sign up for stuff and then realize it's not quite as simple as they thought. Amen, I'm going back to school, I'm signing up, here we go. You get in that first class, oh, that was easy. Class two, three, by the third week, fourth week, hmm, starting to get a little bit more challenging. Amen? Motivation, energy, enthusiasm, emotion will only take you so far. You need something more than just the excitement or the intensity of the moment to take you through. 
Going back to that same parable, it talks about, amen, those seeds that, that, that fall by the wayside and they're eaten by the birds, and it talks about the ones that fall on stony ground. And because they have no roots, in other words, they got started, but they didn't get rooted. We oftentimes talk about this in terms of our spiritual depth and understanding, but in terms of your assignment, many times you have an assignment that you get going, but you haven't prepared right, or you don't have a foundation. You're running on nothing, and you have nothing to stand on. Amen? You haven't gotten the right preparation for what you're going to do, or you're not running on the right basis. Motivation, your energy, your enthusiasm, your excitement can only take you so far. You're going to need more than that to give you a foundation to stand on because there's going to come times when whatever your assignment is, there's going to be something that's going to try and hinder you. And in the third phase of that, that revelation uh, uh, that Jesus gives, he talks about there, there are seeds that are sown, and all of a sudden there, there are, there are, there are uh, thorns and things that come up and begin to choke out the seed, weeds that come up. And when he interprets that for them later, he describes it this way in Mark 4 and 19. He says, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in Choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. You got the right assignment, but it got choked out. You got the right idea, but it got choked out. What did it get choked out by? The other priorities in your life. The cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. What does that mean? Amen. Riches will have you doing all kind of things to get them. We work so we can make more money, so we can spend more. Why? Because there are things that we want. And so we get so focused on making money, we get so focused on surviving, we get so focused on what we have to do. These things distract us to the point where we lose track of what our assignment was. Cares of this world. So having the assignment is one thing. Executing it, understand, is a whole other thing. As you go forth to try and go after what it is that God has instructed you to do, Understand there are things around you. Life is going to try and choke out your idea. Life is going to try and hinder you from going another direction. I put something on my website, on the, web, on the, on the Facebook page this week, I mean, by Steve Harvey, some of you might have seen, where he was talking about junk in his own way. You know, he almost got all the way through it without cursing, just, just, just got right to the end. I, was like, I guess I'm about to preach my own sermon, because I anyway. But he was talking about this concept, which was so true, of jumping. There are times when you have to be willing to step out from your comfort zone of where you are and what you do. A lot of times we would do our assignment, but we say, oh, I got to do this, I got to handle that. I'd love to do that, but I'm stuck because I have to do this. I got to take care of that. I'm responsible for that. I got to keep this under control. I got this thing I got to do. Amen. I was talking to somebody this week, amen, who was, who was just struggling. I was trying to talk to him, and he couldn't even make real time to talk to me because he's struggling because he's like, you know, I want to do this but I, I have to do this. I got to have this job. I got to make this money. I got to take care of my kids. I got to do this. But I really like to do this, but I, he's, he's struggling in between. The cares of the world will bind you up and keep you from ever jumping, from ever doing the concept of what God has put in your heart. The passion that's in your life, it will hinder you because you'll be constantly driven, amen, to all these other priorities that will choke out the word, the assignment, the dream, the vision that God has put in your heart. I know I'm talking to somebody today. You need to understand, amen, that you have, and have to stay focused on your assignment. Once you have it, you have to remain focused on it. Sometimes you get tired of being focused. Sometimes distractions come. Sometimes other things will try and get in your way. We said last week we're living in a time of multitasking. There's very seldomly any time you do any one thing. Some of y'all in here right now, amen, watching, listening to me, doing other th stuff at the same time. Amen? Some of you write notes. That's all right. <laughs> But, you, but, but we have a constant, constant time and atmosphere, society of multitasking. You notice now when you watch the news on television, you've got one person up here talking to you. You've got something streaming across the bottom. And some of us have our own thing going on at the same time you're watching that, trying to read that. I find myself in the morning trying to read the bottom while I'm listening to what they're saying on top, trying to capture the picture. They're talking about multiple things at the same time. 
We're constantly focused on all kinds of things. And very seldomly do we take time to stop and do the one thing that we need to do right now. Amen? It's difficult to focus on what God has in line for you. So it's one thing to have the assignment, but you've got to keep your focus, you've got to keep your attention on what it is you're supposed to do. You've got to make time, you've got to make priority for the thing that God has given you. You'll never get it done if you never can give it priority. If there's always something else that has to be done first, the only way to achieve your assignment is to keep your focus. Understand that in the midst of this, when God gives you something to do, there are many things that will intentionally seek to distract you. They will intentionally try and draw you in a different direction. And by the way, sometimes if they can't get you to all out stop, they will redirect you. Okay, do what you're supposed to do, but do it over here. Do it this way. Give it to this. Give your gift to that. Instead of doing what God gave you to do, they will distract you into doing other things and being focused on other things. You need to understand that what God has told you to do, that's what you've got to keep your heart and your mind stayed on. The Bible says be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. You've got to keep the word of the Lord close to you. You've got to keep it close enough so that nothing else can shake you from what God has said in your life. Amen. You need to write it down. You need to record it. You need to memorize it. You need to have it in front of you. You need to have a constant reminder. Make a bumper sticker out of it. In fact, put it on a little button and stick it on front of you. Put it in front of your face. Flash it on a television screen. Remind yourself of what God has told you to do. And don't let anything hinder, distract, deter you from doing what God has said in your life. I want to take you back to the vision that we talked about over the past couple of weeks, we were talking about the image of the wilderness, the children of God coming, amen, out of, of, of Egypt and passing through to the promised land. This became, in essence, the core, amen, vision of what God has pointed to us to do. We've got to come out of our area of bondage, come out of our area of limitation, come out of that area that has kept us where we were and head towards our promised land. God has given you an assignment. God has given you a purpose. You have a promised land. Somebody say, I have a promised land. I have something that God has promised to me. I have a place that God wants to take me. I have something that God wants me to achieve. You have been designed and built, created with purpose. So there is a purpose in mind for you. But sometimes we get bound up in a place, amen, where we are not supposed to be. Locked up, held up, withheld from our promise, withheld from our purpose, amen, just sometimes just living life, amen, by the breath that we breathe and the food that we eat, sustaining but not yet living, because you will not be living until you live in your purpose. You've got to leave that place of bondage, escape from there, and God will take you through a place of transition from where you were to where you're supposed to be. We said the wilderness was that place in between. As you let go of the past, some people can't get out of bondage because they won't let it go. They've gotten too comfortable with that person that mistreats you gotten too comfortable with that situation that isn't for your good, but at least you survive. Got too comfortable with that circumstance, which is not your blessing, but just your sustaining. You've got to let go of where you were to start again where God is taking you. That's the jump you've got to take. And you have to pass through that element of wilderness to get there. Now, I want you to see a couple more things about the wilderness today, because as you are passing through to where God would have you to do, as you are beginning on the road of your assignment, understand what it means to go through the wilderness. When the children of Israel went through the wilderness, they didn't just go through for a moment. There are multiple days of passing through a wilderness, multiple days of passing through a barren, barren desert, looking at the same thing. 
seeing the same thing day after day, nothing but desert, nothing but wilderness, one tree, one cactus beginning to look like the next. This doesn't look like my promise. This just looks like barrenness. It looks like I'm going through and nothing's happening. It looks like I'm pressing on, but nothing's changing. After a while, I can't even tell whether I'm going in the right direction or somewhere along the way I got lost. Think about it, not just one day, not just two days, not just 10 days, but 40 days through a wilderness. Looking out at the horizon, where is my promise? Where is my land? And seeing the same thing day after day after day that doesn't look like what God promised me I was coming to. Lord, I left where I was comfortable. I'm pressing on, but I still don't see any sign of what you promised was coming my way. Mm. Walking through the wilderness, walking through hardships, walking through things. I can imagine every day waking up and seeing the same horizon, nothing but desert. There comes another mountain, amen, of desert, another mountain of sand. You get over the top of that, what's next? Another mountain of sand, horizon after horizon, not changing, not showing any promise. I can't see a mountain, amen, in the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the end of the horizon. All I can see is more and more desert. There are times when you have to press through what it is that you have to go through to get where you're going, and there is no sense of promise other than what God told you. That's why you have to be able to hold on to the promise that God spoke in your life because sometimes it's not going to be based on what you see. It's just going to be based on what God said. As they go through the, as they go through the wilderness, amen, they go through more and more. And the longer you go through the wilderness, the more it steals your attention from your goal. Because after a while, you stop worrying about trying to get to that promised land, and all I'm trying to worry about is how am I getting through this desert? I start forgetting the fact of where I'm trying to go, because I got problems. I got real problems right now. My feet are hot. My sandals are wearing out. Oh, guess what? I didn't bring enough water because I didn't expect to be out here all this time. Guess what? My food sources are beginning to run out. And so I become distracted to the point because instead of knowing, when I left Egypt, I was like, here we go. We're going to the promised land. Here we go. We're going to go there. There it is, right? We're going to go through here, go to the promised land. But after a while, I stopped forgetting about the promised land and start focusing on the desert that I'm living in right now. And hardships begin to come up and begin to take your attention away from your purpose and put them on how I got to survive today. In the midst of the things that you're going through, now all of a sudden the difficulties and the lacks begin to rise up. I'm lacking in food. I'm lacking in clothing. My kids are getting hungry. My family is suffering. It's been hot for so many days. I don't know how to provide for my own needs. I don't have time to think about promised land. All I can think about right now is desert. And right now, I, the children of Israel, am thinking about the fact that we don't have any water. I don't have time to think about what's happening on the other side of the hill. Right now, at this moment, I've got a problem. I don't have any water. Right now, I have a problem because I don't have any food to give to my children. My family is going hungry. I don't have time to worry about purpose of tomorrow. I've got to deal with today. I want you to understand that there are times when as you're going towards your promise, all the distractions come and they become to you things that are so real and so vital and so important that they become the priority and you don't have time to think about where you're trying to go. Those distractions at that moment become the most important thing in your life, which begins to take your attention off where you were supposed to be going and put your attention on now. Yes, Lord, you may have said there's a promise for me along the way, but I need something right now. And you need to understand that the distractions that come in your life become so vital and so important and so critical that sometimes you feel like I cannot even survive unless I deal with this thing. But this is what you need to understand. The things that are coming against you are not there to destroy you. They are just distractions. 
because God would not put you in a wilderness on the way to promise and not have a plan for the distractions and issues that were coming in your life. It may seem like you have to change all your priorities, change all your focus, change all your attention to deal with this critical issue here, but God did not bring you out there without a plan on how to handle that to get you over there. Sometimes we get locked in the wilderness and we can't go forward because all we can focus on is the distractions I'm dealing with right now. My family has a need. So I need to pause, I need a break, I need a time out. Amen, I'll come back to that another time. God, I heard you, but I need to wait on that. I need to deal with this right now. You need to understand that you don't need to stop going forward because of distractions that are coming in your life. Understand God will take care of the distractions. You just need to keep your eyes on the horizon of where God is taking you to. 